The Dallas cop accused of killing her neighbor after entering his apartment instead of her own took the stand in her murder trial today. Former officer Amber Geiger collapsing in tears as she described what happened on that night. Casey Stiegel reporting. He's live from the courthouse. Casey. Yeah, Shepard, you know, she had shown emotion in court before, especially listening as she made that frantic 911 call that night after realizing she was not in her apartment and that she had just shot an innocent man. But the tears really started flowing today once evidence from that night was pulled out. September of last year, her department issued police gear, her bulletproof vest, and then the service weapon that she used, testifying that she fired off two shots because she thought 20 six year old Botham Jean was burglarizing her apartment and was a threat. Listen. I ask God for forgiveness and I hate myself every single day. I feel like I don't deserve the chance to be with my family and friends. I wish he was the one with the gun and that killed me. I never wanted to take an innocent person's life. The former cop testified that she gave verbal commands like show me your hands prior to firing that weapon, but the prosecution refuted that with a string of witnesses, neighbors from that apartment complex, Shep, who say they never heard commands prior to the shooting. Casey Steele at the courthouse. Casey, thank you. So we Geiger is testifying right now in her own defense. The defense started this morning making its case in her murder trial. This is after the state rested late today and Ed Lavendera has just stepped out of that courtroom so he can bring us this live report. Ed, right now she is being cross-examined by the prosecution. What are they doing to combat what the defense really teed up as a sympathetic character, it seems? Yeah, it was very emotional as she was being questioned by her own attorneys earlier this morning. Uh, she became very emotional as she described the moments that she walked into what she thought, she says she thought was her own apartment, and it turned out was Botham Jean's apartment. But uh, prosecutors uh, have been scathing and intense over the last couple of hours in their questioning of Amber Geiger, when really going at, at several things. Her demeanor, um, uh, of, of being very emotional uh, this morning here on the witness stand and prosecutors contrasted that with her demeanor as she was captured on body cam footage and in a police uh, car dash cam uh, video. They said that uh, they pointed out that she was crying more this morning essentially than she was on the night of the shooting. Uh, and also going after uh, a series of other questions. And I think what will be most central here to this jury was uh, the prosecutors say that essentially Amber Geiger had two options to either engage with the person that was inside the apartment or she could have retreated and concealed herself and tried to give herself more time to assess the situation. Um, and that is where some of the most intense questioning has been from, from prosecutors. Uh, but this is, uh, we're gonna share a little bit of, of what the questioning has been been like uh, this is the moment where prosecutors uh, were engaging with Amber uh, or uh, with Amber Geiger getting her to recount what it is she told both of John as she entered that apartment on September 6th of last year as a police officer when it really matters how did you give a loud verbal command in an authoritative and clear voice you would have said let me see your hand let me see your hand right it would be a loud voice, yes. Amber Geiger says it all happened very quickly in, in a matter of seconds. In the very emotional parts uh, that, were, that we saw this morning, Amber Geiger uh, says she feels like a terrible person. I feel like a piece of crap. I wish he, referring to Botham John, was the one with the gun and that he had killed me. So uh, that is a sampling of just uh, what has been a very intense morning here in this Dallas courtroom. Lynn? Ed Lavender, I know you need to get back into that courtroom to get the latest. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. I want to bring in criminologist Casey Jordan and criminal defense attorney RJ Manuelian. And Casey, I'll start with you because you heard Ed there talking about the fact that they are, are saying, listen, you were more upset today, crying harder today than you were the day you shot both of them, John. You say accidentally. Do you think that that's effective? I do. And I think that, you know, playing that 911 phone call earlier today really did some damage to her because even though she is incredibly composed on the stand, uh, far more articulate than I actually anticipated, and breaking down crying was, you know, definitely an appeal to the jury. 
I don't think they're going to get the 911 phone call out of their, their minds because that's where she was 100% concerned about herself and not the victim of the shooting. So I think the jury's biggest challenge right now is kind of weighing what they see in front of them on the stand. And she appears to be very well prepared versus the visibly and, and audibly upset cop who made that one 911 phone call. And I think they're more likely to believe the 911 phone call is the real police officer. And here's more of what she said on the stand. Listen. When you shot at Mr. Jean, you knew you were using deadly force against him. Yes. You know what a bullet can do, don't you? Yes, I do. And when you shot at him twice, you intended to kill him. Y yes, sir. RJ, I mean, as a defense attorney, would you be cringing if you heard your client say that? No, not really. That That's par for the course. I, I would expect that, and I would expect that the lawyers went over that with Ms. Greiger. Look, they're, se they're second-guessing her actions and her motives. The jury has to look at it from a subjective point of view, Greiger's point of view. They have to listen to her and believe her. And if they do believe her state of mind, then despite the fact that Greiger went beyond the protocol of her training, in other words, despite the fact that she didn't de-escalate the situation, she could still be found not guilty if they believe that she believed, truly believed that the threat was imminent. And that's gonna be based on the totality of the evidence. Uh, walking into the wrong apartment door, the door being ajar, she just came off of a 13 and a half hour long shift. So she was on autopilot at the time. She came off the wrong floor. She was on the fourth level. Everything looks the same. Even the prosecution's investigator said he got caught up and he got lost. So the jury's going to look at the totality of everything before they make that decision, not just on her callousness of her behavior after the fact. Because, Casey, we keep pounding this over and over again, but it's a murder charge that has to show intent. How difficult do you think that will be to prove? I actually think that this may be a case where they have overcharged. Now, the grand jury returned that indictment for, for murder, but based on what she's saying, it really does seem like a more appropriate uh, charge would have been negligent manslaughter, negligent homicide. Uh, you know, should she have known better? And what RJ said is really important because the jury has to put themselves in the shoes of Amber Geiger. But the problem is she is a highly trained police officer. And, the, and you have to ask yourself, can the average civilian, uh, you know, jury of your peers understand what it's like to be a police officer who is trained to reach for a gun and has a gun on her at that time? It really just depends, I think, on whether the jury relates more to the victim or whether or not they relate to this police officer. And relating to a cop is a really hard thing. If you've never been to the academy and don't understand how that training is instilled in somebody, I think that is her best defense, that she's a cop who reacted as a cop would do, that they may not be able to put themselves in her shoes. RJ, do you think that she was effective there on the stand? Did she seem sympathetic to the jurors to the point where they will be able to see her in the light that Casey's talking about? I personally think that she was uh, very sympathetic. I think that her attorneys humanized her, but I, I agree that the jury demographic is very important. You have five African-American, you have five Hispanic and Asian, two African-American and two white alternate jurors. So the jury makeup is everything in this case. If they can associate themselves more with Mr. Jean, then they may be more prone to vote guilty. If they could empathize with Greiger and they empathize with her training and what she went through and everything that happened on September 6th with her long day, they may actually vote not guilty. But I think, in my opinion, this is going to be a hung jury. It's too close to call. It's very hard to discern. And there was a series of unfortunate events that happened. And uh, based on that, I think they're not going to be able to reach a conclusion in this case. And, you know, the Texas Ranger, many people pointing to the significant testimony that the jury will never hear that, that he did not think that she committed a crime. Now, the jury will not hear that because the judge said, listen, that's your opinion, obviously, but still significant to you, Casey? I do think that's important. Listen, everyone at, when this came out was really incredulous about the facts of the case. And I think that it may have been overarching to go for murder because everyone was like, she must have known this guy. This must have been a vendetta. How could you not know that it was the wrong apartment? But I have to tell you, she's been very effective on the stand. She, uh, I, I'm not going to use the word 
coached, but she's been guided very well by her defense attorneys. She is looking at the jury. She is trying to get them to look at her. She wants the sympathy of, of basically arguing, I walked into the wrong apartment by mistake. Um, and everything that came from that is from the mistake. There was no intent to kill anybody. And yet we have to remember that all officers, when they shoot their guns, they must shoot to kill. That is part of their training. So I, I, it's a really difficult conundrum for this jury. And I, I agree with RJ. We may end up with a hung jury because I don't know that they're going to want to go for murder. I think they would rather have the option of negligent manslaughter in this case. Let's listen to more of Amber Geiger's testimony. This specifically about CPR and Botham John. Listen. You also indicated um, that you've never done CPR before. No, I have not. But you were trained to do CPR in the academy, were you not? We were trained. I've never done it on an actual person. All right, so to, at least then to the extent that you were, um, you weren't suggesting that you didn't know how to properly perform CPR. They taught us briefly in the academy. You knew how to perform CPR properly, right? I never done it on a person. I couldn't say I actually. Ms. Geiger, were you trained to do CPR properly? Yes, we were. Okay, were you at those classes? Yes, I was. Were you paying attention during those classes? Yes, I was. Did you properly perform CPR on Mr. John? No, I did not. And I you did. could have, right? I tried to do a little CPR. Why would you try? RJ, what do you make of that? I tried to do a little CPR. Why did she not use her uh, radio rather than calling 911? They would have responded quicker. I think the prosecution is trying to use callousness and bootstrap or callousness to the guilt, in my opinion. I mean, just very clear to me that the prosecution is nitpicking everything that Greiger didn't do. But again, when you're in this situation, you have tunnel vision. When, you're, when your heart is elevated and you think that you're about to be killed, you see things differently. And that's what the defense attorneys need to hammer over and over again at the closing argument. Sure, it's easy for us to play Monday morning quarterback and look at this thing hindsight in 2020, but we got to put ourselves in the shoes of Greiger at the time that this happened. Yeah, RJ Manueli and Casey Jordan, great to have you both. Thanks so much. Thank Don't go much. far. We're back after this short break. Why did you want to be a police officer? I just wanted to help people, and that was the one career that I thought I could help people in.